Uh, Josh here with PNP Energy. I am in charge of business development. Uh, we've had a few uh, customers come um, to us and ask for certain things. Um, like one would be a generator start for a Kubota generator. So uh, as you know, several uh, days without uh, sun, um, rain, snow, uh, that can reduce the battery state of charge. So um, having this photo to our remote start is awesome. Uh, PMP it will be able to walk you through some of the design process. So you have questions out there or a project that's um, not like anyone else, uh, give us a call, reach out to us. Uh, we do have a wonderful staff that could help um, design and implement some of these solutions for you. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Josh. And yes, this episode, we're covering how we've come up with the solution for a customer that wants the Kubota generator to automatically start using the NeoVolta all-in-one uh, unit. We will show a short video next about the Kubota generator. Remember, this uses a two-wire remote start, and it's almost the standard in the industry, a two-wire start. So PMP Energy can make the custom interfaces between the NeoVolta system and what you need. The Kubota GL Series generators offer efficient power in the Whisper Quiet compact package. These units range in size from 7kW to 14kW output, but today we're going to be focusing on the GL14000. This unit is rated at 12kW and maxes out at 14kW. The Kubota GL14000 generator is 52 inches long, 26 inches wide, and 36 inches tall. Weighing in at 904 pounds makes it perfect for mounting on a trailer. Through Kubota's easy to use service door, you'll see their own D902 diesel engine powering this generator. With a nine and a half gallon fuel tank, the GL14000 generator can run at full load continuous for seven hours. The alternator is optimized to generate more magnetic force with fewer turns. This improves long-term reliability and durability. This alternator is coated with an extra layer of varnish to protect it from moisture and to protect it in extreme environments. From this service door, this is where we can perform all of our routine maintenance. Oil gauge, oil filter, oil fill, fuel filter, water tank, battery, and air cleaner. Engine oil and coolant drain extensions are included to help with regularly scheduled changes. On the bottom here, you can see the drains for fuel, oil, and water. Not many other generators in this size range offer this option. Let's close this service door and head over to the control panel over on the front of the generator. From here, you have all of your controls and your electrical hookups. Kubota has really thought this design through and has included nice features not seen in other generators. Features include key switch start, output meter, adjustable voltage regulator, and mains breaker. Below are 120 volt outlets, a 240 twist lock outlet, and direct output hookups. The Kubota GL14000 generator is the industry leader in providing power for medium to large size construction job sites. To check out a GL14000 or any of the GL series generators, please contact AIE or any dealer near you. For contact information, see the description below. Here is that contact information that would have been uh, shown below. The website is up above and that is the actual headquarters in Omaha, their mailing address, phone number. This particular customer of ours wanted to interface the NeoVolta to a Kubota diesel generator. And we said, yes, we can do that. We've got a couple other special design circuits that we've done to be able to provide these interfaces. And we're gonna show those to you uh, one a week as we go through it. But right now, this particular one is a generator start circuit. And specifically, it's gonna allow us to interface to the Kubota. And now the NeoVolta can interface to it, automatically turn on when the battery gets too low, when the battery gets charged up enough, 
automatically turns off. Everything is working. Okay, so this is your deep dive into more of the electronics and the circuits of how to make your special requirements work. Thanks. So we said we would show you the design process and here that goes. We actually start with the requirements. Once the requirements are defined, then we might just do a hand sketch of a potential schematic, how it would work, how we could get everything. And then we would go do a breadboard circuit. Here's a breadboard for the circuit that we're talking about. It isn't all that pretty, but it gives us the ability to test out our thoughts about how to make the circuit. It isn't production worthy, but it will verify that the logic we're trying to do is going to work for the application. So knowing that the logic works, we start looking for integrated circuits that are going to implement that logic that we want. Now, here is an integrated circuit or an IC. This particular one is a pulse width modulator. It's for the DC to DC converter. And everything inside the rectangle is what's actually inside that small integrated circuit. So everything on the outside is what hooks to the pins, and you have to supply that to customize it for the way you want your circuit to work. We're going to show how that gets implemented in both the schematic capture and in the printed circuit board layout. The picture on your left is from the schematic capture uh, CAD system. It shows the nine pins that are on that integrated circuit and it gives you enough information to where you know what that particular pin is used for. An example, GND, that stands for ground. Uh, VIN is voltage in, you know, so you got an idea of how that works. On your right, this is the physical layout of that small integrated circuit and how it goes on the printed circuit board. You've got to make the logical tie in with the physical that goes on the board. This is one sheet of the schematic that shows taking the 48 volt input. We go from that to provide 12 volts for all the FET drivers. The 12 volt then has an additional step down to the 5 volts for the logic circuit. And the 5 volt goes to another integrated circuit that provides a voltage reference that we can use a precision reference to monitor what's going on with the battery. So that's the schematic. And this is how it looks on the actual printed circuit board. So you can see, when you're just looking at the board, it's like, oh my gosh, what is this? Yeah. And that's why you've got to have the good schematic and the schematic has to be tied and synchronized with the printed circuit board. Here, it is exactly that. The integrated circuit that we started off with is highlighted with the white. It's shown in the schematic capture on the left and it's shown as where it is on the actual printed circuit board on the right. After the printed circuit board is done, then we've got to get the plastic case that's going to protect everything and help, it, help to hold it right on top of the battery and allow you to connect the wires to it, make everything work. So this was the first pass we got back from the 3D uh, printing company. We sent them the mechanical design file for the printed circuit board, explained basically what we needed. <laughs> and I can tell you the connector is like 90 degrees out of whack. The uh, top is not what we asked for but it's close. Here, uh, we tried to show them how we wanted the top to slope down, only it was supposed to start off high where the print circuit board goes into the terminal block and then it slopes down in the back. Uh, they got it backwards. <laughs> so here it is. 
Here's the proto with the printed circuit board going out to the right and on the back, the left hand side. That's where you can see the WAGO connector. It's a three terminal connector, can take a wide range of wire sizes, I think from like 24 gauge through uh, 12 gauge, if I believe. So it's a wide range of wires and that is it. Next, I'll show you mounted on the battery. And there we go. So easy installation. You just loosen those two center uh, bolts. Then you connect the generator starter to that. And the plastic case holds it firmly in place. It is two wire with both the normally open or the normally close. So totally that gives you three positions. There is a full isolation between the battery and the signals. The wires going to the generator can have up to 48 volts DC or 120 volts AC on them at the generator side and everything is working fine for that. It's also possible to get custom settings if you need. Uh, just give us a call and I bet we can take care of that for you. So here's our website, www.pmp-energy.com. We would love to hear from you. Send us your comments or questions. Uh, email your questions to mike at pmp-energy.com. That's me. And we are using these YouTubes to provide answers to a lot of the frequent questions that we get. If you send us a question and we use your question on one of our YouTube videos, we'll send you a PMP Energy hat, okay? So I hope you got some good news out of this and you understand that PMP Energy can do more than the normal uh, suppliers, we can actually help you provide the solutions that you need. Thanks.